गोपाल जी पूरा करो पूरा करो यस यू कैन थैंक यू I rise to thank the honorable president of his service to the members of the both the houses of parliament which is the honorable president delivered on 29th January 2018 to begin with i would like to sadly say that it is a very dull address presently people of india are facing great challenges farmers are desperate Youths are not getting employment. Common men are facing unprecedented rise in the prices of essential commodities. Tamil Nadu fishermen are continuously being harassed, and the president address did not mention how it is going to address the challenges. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, coming to the address, as it is at page two of the address. the honorable president mentioned about the provision of 26 weeks paid leave for working women by amending the maternity benefit act i would like to proudly point out that the tamil nadu government had already extended this benefit to women in tamil nadu by giving 9 months or 270 days paid leave to such a women employees the government of tamil nadu is also giving rupees 18000 to poor pregnant women under dr muthulakshmi reddy maternity benefit scheme as per our party selection manifesto of 2016 the president mentioned about removing the difficulties faced by the farmers and to raise their standard of living but whenever drought or flood occurs it is the farming community which is worst affected and this happens perennially there is a huge agrarian crisis throughout the country and over the years thousands of farmers are coming to suicide here i request the government to consider waiver of loans taken by the farmers so that they come out of their present difficulties moreover the farmers of tamil nadu are dependent on kaveri waters for farming and due to the unavailability of the kaveri water the delta farmers of tamil nadu are facing distress the sharing of kaveri water by karnataka is still under dispute the kaveri river water dispute tribunal had mandated setting up of kaveri management board to ensure implementation of the final order on sharing of water between karnataka and tamil nadu i demand the government to immediately constitute the kaveri management board with the president address talks about dairy sector i am sorry to say that it did not make mention about fisheries sector and the flight of the tamil fishermen were being harassed on daily basis fishermen issue is frustrating issue with no end in sight it is lingering on for several years without permanent solution this is an issue of livelihood of lakhs of fishermen from tamil nadu honorable deputy speaker sir the worst part of it is that presently the sri lankan parliament has passed a foreign fishing vessel bill giving powers to the sri lankan government to, imp to impose huge penalties running into crores of rupees longer incarceration of captured fishermen and also confiscation and final disposal of fishing travelers and gifts of the tamil tamil fishermen ordinarily the sri lankan sri lankan navy personnel capture tamil fishermen even when they fishing peacefully in their traditional waters take them to sri lanka put them in jail and arrest them and now with the passage of this bill which is a unilateral move on the part of sri lanka the fishermen as a worried lot left completely at the mercy of sri lanka there is a widespread resentment and panic among them i request the center to use its diplomatic might to prevail upon sri lanka not to implement this act and to save tamil fishermen from agony 
In this regard, I also request the government. Mr. Chairman, sir, FM, FM wants to say something regarding the issue of the Andhra Pradesh. Sir. Sir, my honorable friends from uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, have been raising this issue uh, of the, with regard to the special package of uh, Andhra Pradesh. I have earlier also said the central government is completely committed uh, to the package. Let me just acquaint them. With Sir, these, these, the package uh, had been in two years ago, the package itself had been announced. And the package itself involves that since uh, as a special category state you get 90-10 from the centre in terms of central sector schemes. And uh, the normal states will get 60-40, so the difference is 30%. So the state had suggested that this 30% for five years should be given by way of externally aided programs. Now these externally aided projects have to be cleared by the external agencies which takes time. So now the state has made a proposal that instead of externally aided projects, it should be done from NABAD. Now there is some issue with regard to in whose fiscal deficit that will go. So that's to get out of that situation. I have had a discussion with friends from Andhra Pradesh today. And we have invited, asked the expenditure secretary to work out the details of an extra budgetary mechanism that the quantum of amount will remain the same. And that assistance, therefore, can be made available to the state in a, in a manner. I think he has invited the finance secretary of Andhra Pradesh to fix the procedures. Our officers will fix it. And I'm sure that this will be done. And the center, let me reassert that whatever is given in the Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act, we stand fully committed to every aspect of it. As regards, no so in this regard, I also request the government to rescind the two unconstitutional agreements signed in 1972 and 1974 and retook Kachetivu, which only restored the traditional fishing rights of Tamil fishermen. As regards fishery sector in general, Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu has requested for comprehensive special package for diversification of fisheries through his memorandum submitted to the Honorable Prime Minister on 27 February 2017. It is for a total of rupees 1,650 crore with rec recurring component of rupees 10 crore. I request the centre to kindly approve this at the earliest. Sir. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, here I may also point out that the government of India had sanctioned Constructive of five, construction of five fisher, fishing arbors in Tamil Nadu at a cost of rupees 521 crore, of which rupees 298 crores was committed as the center share. Though the construction of fishing arbor is nearing completion, center's release of rupees 143 crore is still pending. I request the center to look into this and release the center's share. The president mentions about ensuring the availability of the availability of two square meals to uh, poor persons. Here I would like to state that the government of Tamil Nadu is already giving 20 kg free rice to nearly 1.85 crore card orders. While the president makes a mention about women's empowerment, I am sorry to say that it did not mention about the political empowerment of women. The bill to reserve 33 percent of seats for women in legislature is pending and it has not seen the light of the day. In Tamil Nadu, we have given 50 percent reservation of seats for women in local bodies. I request the government to bring forward the women reservation bill and pass it during the current Lok Sabha.
Even though the address mentions about railways, it did not make a mention about solution to the problems being faced in the railways. Coming to the railway infrastructure, the less said that better it is. I welcome the government's initiative for introducing bullet trains. At the same time, the government should strengthen the railway infrastructure so as to avoid accidents. One of the major reasons for this being a rail fracture. As regards recruitment in railways, during the last nearly 10 years, there have been widespread malpractices and irregularities. If one browses through the list of appointees, particularly in the Southern Railway, one would know it. Here I would like to plead the centre to leave the recruitment process of Group C and D employees to the Journal Railways instead of doing it in the All India level. I would like to draw the attention of the House to the youth. Youths have completed Act Apprenticeship course, but who are yet to be employed in the railways. Because of the introduction of only 20% reservation for the course completed Act Apprenticeities. Through, throughout the country, there are more than 20,000 20, such Apprenticeities. They are undergoing mental agony due to uncertain future who have completed this course with the hope that they will be absorbed in the railways, which was the practice till some years back. It is reliably learned that there are about 1,70,000 vacancies in the railways in which they could easily be absorbed. I request the railway minister to consider sympathetically the plight of those people and grant one-time relaxation for the present rule so that they are employed in the railways. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, <coughs> the policy related to defense manufacturing sector has been mentioned. I would like to mention about shocking decision taken by the government to grant rupees 10,000 as uniform allowance to our brave soldiers in place of stitched uniform. I would like to remind the House about the report which stated that one of the reasons why India had set back in 1962 war with China was non-provision of suitable uniform to our soldiers. This led to the establishment of ordinance clothing factories including one in Avadi, Chennai, which is in my constituency. Since then, for the last more than 50 years, the OCF has been manufacturing several types of strategic combat uniforms required for armed forces. Hence, the implementation of the decision of the government to grant uniform allowance would make 12,000 permanent different civilian employees jobless, which includes nearly 2,000 women employees. Moreover, asking, asking the employees to purchase uniforms from the market would not only jeopardize the uniformity in the address, but also would lead to purchase of poor quality uniform endangering their lives and also would pose a threat to the nation's security. Hence, I request the government to kindly intervene immediately and withdraw its order to check of armed forces of our country. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, with, uh, with, the, with the regard to recruitment of civilians in defense, particularly in HF and OCF Harvardy, I may dismay to see that more practices and irregularities have taken place, including impersonation for which three persons had been arrested. It is a two to three years old case. <coughs> we, do not, we do not know what happened to that now. I request the government to see that exams are held in a fair way so that talent is given priority. So, Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, the President address talks about the introduction of GST. Here I would like to draw the attention of the government to the lacuna which is existing in levying GST on projects executed by the state government. This in essence amounts to fiscal transfer from the states to the union government and it is in a way tax on states paid from the tax collected from the people. This affects adversely the financial capacity of the states 
to execute works. Hence, I request the government to take it up in the next GST council so that the work contracts executed for the state governments are exempt from the purview of the GST. Finally, I would like to make a point about the recommendations of the 14th Finance Commission have adversely affected developed and developing states like Tamil Nadu. I may point out that while the devolution to the states was increased from 32% to 42%, the government has reduced its share of centrally sponsored things from 75% to 60%. <coughs> For the state of Tamil Nadu, the share was reduced from 4.969% to 4.023%, leaving it to fill the gap from its own scarce resources. This has impacted severely the ability of the state government to finance the state's own schemes. No doubt, Tamil Nadu is a developed state, but to maintain and sustain the development, we also need resources. Hence, I request the government to compensate states like Tamil Nadu, which have lost resources from the center, to ensure equity in center's allocations. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, to make a specific point, the union government not increased allocations for schemes like Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan and Rastiya Madhimik Shiksha Abhiyan over the last three years, and they have been largely stagnant. Today's education is tomorrow's national wealth, and if you do not make adequate allocations now, we may lose our nation's economic development in future. I therefore request the government to increase the allocations to the schemes. Similarly, I wish to point out there are huge backlogs in release of grants from center affecting the implementation of the schemes. Tamil Nadu has a pending arrears of rupees 6,696 crore to be received from the government of India under various centrally sponsored schemes. For example, an amount of rupees 1,547 crores is pending under the post metric scholarship for the scheduled cost, rupees 1,312 crores under Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, rupees 1,588 crores under Rastriya Madhimik Shiksha Abhiyan, etc. Since the release of pending arrears who directly and positively impact the implementation of the centrally sponsored schemes. So I request the government to consider and make release in time for the states to implement these schemes effectively. With these words, once again, I thank the Honorable Speaker, Madam, having given me a time and support the motion of thanks on the President. Thank you, sir.